All right, guys, so I got bad news. The uh, transmission went out in my daily, which is my Mercedes Benz. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap it because I have another transmission. This one is an automatic for Mercedes. It's called the 722. I'm gonna change the transmission and I'm gonna change the torque converter. I'm gonna go through every step. I'm gonna tell you what all the bolts are. I'm gonna show you how to get them off. And we're going to take the journey together. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And I promise to get back to you and help you out any way I can. Let's go get this job done. So this is a... Mercedes-Benz um, C230 compressor 1.8 supercharged. This is the 1.8 supercharged. I snuck it in my shop here while we were working on other stuff. And the same motor we're looking at right there. This is the, the front of the motor. Supercharger. This is the 1.8 um, Mercedes that we were just looking at out of my old car. And this is the transmission. So this right here is the actual line. This line that connects down here is the actual line. And uh, not this one. Oh, well, there's two of them that are down there. And they go, that's exactly what went. So it's this line right here that connects into the radiator from the transmission. This is the one I'm going to pull out. And uh, this one here on the bottom. So we have an extra set. Um, this is now the pan. This down here is called the transition pan. You see the bottom of this? So you see there's a screw here. One, two, three. And there's one, two, three on the other side. This is actually like a little bit of a square rectangle. Very easy to take off. I think these were 30s, T30, Torx 30. Um, I took it off with a quarter drive. They're not on there very tight. There's a rubber gasket in here. You don't have to squish it very hard. Um, and it's going to take care of it. These transmissions are supposed to be bulletproof unless they get like a coolant catastrophic failure, failure like mine did. So take these off. This will drop down. And there's like a football shape, flat looking uh black plastic piece in here that's called your transmission filter kind of like your oil filter you want to change this when you change the fluid so that's where we're at right now and um i'm gonna see what happens i'm gonna work okay everybody back uh, i'm gonna have to edit that so this is the torque converter is still on the car um there's some bolts up here that i'm gonna show a little video that they say you can't get these bolts out on top unless you uh, come from the back and put like 20,000 extensions on to get these two top E14s back here you see them they go with this but somehow Javi does it I don't know how he does it but he does it so and then you know, just go around the side and find where all the bolts are and take them out so all these are the 14s then there's a, um, a window in here I think it's there's a window right here on the other side, I'm going to show you on the other motor. On when you come through here, this is where you where you put the uh, through the front. This is how you get these bolts off. Then you have to turn this with the crank. So you're like, okay, so I got these two bolts off of here. How do I get these two and the? How do I get these two off and these two off? I can't spin this. I'm not strong enough. I keep trying to. You don't want to mess these teeth up. So I put a one and one sixteenth um, uh, socket on the front of the crank. I don't know what it is in millimeter, maybe around a 34 or something. I'm not real sure, but the 1/16 uh, was very snug, so I just crank it, or I have somebody else crank it and spin this around until I can um, see or feel where the bolts are. So there's like two, two, and two. There's six bolts on this unit. Uh, a couple other things we had to take off was this is the line. This is an input line and an um, out line so that your uh, coolant can get pumped up to the radiator 
and receive um, some cool off so that your transmission doesn't blow. Now, now this is the drop shaft we have to take off. So these are the bolts where the long ones went in. These are the 19s. Actually, they go this way and it, the bolt and the washer. Make sure you have a washer on this, you know, so it doesn't pull through. And I didn't take any of the other pieces down. They say, oh, you have to take this down, you have to take that down, you have to take everything down to get the drive shaft down. All I do is disconnect it. I push it way up in the air like this. And then I slid the transmission under it. Very easy. This is the first transmission I've done on a, um, on a Mercedes. I did pull the motor out of my other one that was wrecked, but uh, it wasn't the transmission on its own. So let's go on this side. So this is the AC line. This AC line would go right here on the side of the transmission housing. See it here? And the two 10s, the E40s. Remember I told you that you have to have a 10? So the two 10s will go in here and it'll bolt right in. That's an E10. The starter is right here. This is the actual starter for the, for the car. You see how the starter lines up? So, so the starter lines up on the flywheel. When you hit the ignition, a little uh, gear comes out of here and grinds on, guy grabs these gears and starts spinning the car around. It's a lot of torque. So these two bolts that hold the starter in also are the two main bolts that hold in the um, transmission. So they are also 14s. So if you want to change your starter here, you have to take this piece out because it's in the way. You have to undo the steering bolt here, pull the stem down. You have to take this piece of the box out that goes to your supercharger and then you can finally move the starter out. But since we're only changing the transmission, all I had to do was knock it back, you know? Oh. And then uh, whatever will happen, I'll put it together and then I'll just put this back in and readjust it, put the battery on. Now, you see I just touched a starter and the starter is directly connected to the battery. Very high amount of amps going through this, this can hurt you. You always want to disconnect the battery. I tell you guys sometimes I don't disconnect the battery because I'm not using electrical, but this starter, it, you do not want to do this. If you touch ground to positive on this starter, it can blow a hole in your wrench. Let's basically see what's going on with the transmission and where we're at right now. Let me get out from back under here. Remember that hole? That hole for the uh, drive shaft, this goes into that hole for the drive shaft and it has these splines that lock up so that'll turn. If you don't get these splines locked up correctly, you really have a bad problem. Now in all actuality, people put the, the torque converter on and then lift it in there and bolt it in because these splines are hard to get on. But I have a transmission jack. So this is a transmission jack. The jack doesn't go too high. You know, so we, we jacked the transmission up, you see? And then we can change the angle of the transmission. See, it's going this way. And now we change it back. Change the angle back. Now it's more flat. And now it's tilting the other way. Uh, so uh, I didn't take the flywheel off. I left it on here. Now you see how these go inside? Let's get a close look at those. See how on the flywheel, the holes, the stars go inside? So that's called a Torx. Remember now, when it goes in, it's a Torx. When it sticks out, it's called an E. That's how they know um, which tool is which. So you either need a T50 or like an E14. They, they're even, see the, three, the two little bolts here, the two little bolts here, the two little bolts here. That's where your torque converter is going to bolt onto. And you see the little sneaky... Remember I was telling you there's a door back there? I was like, oh, it's back here, it's back here. Well, here it is on the motor. Here's the door. You pop this little piece of metal out right here. You see this little metal? It's just a dust shield. You pop this out. There it is. Boom. Popped it out. And then you stick your wrench in here. And you do one, two. To add a 13. And then you come over here. This is the crank pulley. And I put a 1 and 1 16th on here and I spin the crank pulley. So you see where it's at, right? This is the crank pulley. It turns your crank. 
And when you turn the crank, it's gonna spin this. So I just spin, 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 spin to the next two bolts come up to the window. And when the next two bolts come up to the window, I take it off. And when you get all the bolts out, it's still kind of, there's like a round piece that's still stuck in here a little bit. You kind of wiggle it off. This thing might weigh like 35 pounds. I don't know exactly, but um, uh, that's part of the piece you have to get off. Um, please give us a comment down below. Make sure to like, hit that like button, smash it, make love to it. I don't care what you have to do. Um, also hit subscribe all because we're working on probably like six different projects right now. We keep updating them as we go on. Not everyone is getting updated the same. It depends on when we're getting parts in. Um, if you have any questions about this transmission or you know something about a recall, uh, if you are in the middle of doing this job or you need to do this job, you can comment down below. And if you want me to, I'll make a small video um, or I can maybe DM you um, directly and help you out. So, um, you know, we're not going to do the job for you. Uh, we probably don't even live in your same state, but you know, why not pass information? Uh, information is free and we should all be helping each other. This is the actual torque converter. So the input shaft that sticks out from the inside of the bell housing goes into this and we cover it up because we don't want to get anything inside there. Uh, this is actually the good one that came off the other motor. So it bolts on here from the back, as you can see. It's got two bolts for each side. I forget what they were. I think they were 13, but um, I could be wrong. So check your manual. Always check your manual. I can't remember what every single bolt is. I try to help do the best that I can, but um, always check the manual. So we're going to get under this real quick, and I'm going to show you exactly what we did. Under here, uh, a lot of these these are for the drive shaft. I think there were 19 on both sides. Uh, three came out from the drive shaft. I'm gonna show you. And then these ones are called E's. So you see how the head is like a it looks like a Torx head, six star sticking out. So when you put the Torx down in the bolt, it's called a Torx head. When the the thing is sticking out and you have to have a socket that goes on, it's called an E. So you need. E10s, 12s, and 14s to get this out. So these are the main ones. These are the 14s. If you ever change a starter on a uh, trans um, on a uh, Mercedes, you had to take two of these out. So you can see the difference in the size here. These are the 12s and the 14s. These are the 10s. The 10 is also in there because it's uh, there's an AC. A unit that um, line that is connected if you ever did the starter then again you have to take these out so you have to buy these an E set just to work on these uh, cars so let's go underneath and let's show you what's going on over here all right so this is the install for the uh, Mercedes I'm inside as you can see I crushed myself down under here I'm sweating to death so just have some fun i'm gonna explain to you everything that what just happened so this is the back of the 7 uh 22.6 transmission um we i re we reinstalled these uh, 19 millimeter um drag shaft bolts uh this was a pain in the ass uh pain in the butt getting off so there's this bushing right here. I'll show it to you on one of the on the transmission that's out. This bushing, I kept hitting the trans. I couldn't get the trans over to get it locked in. Then I realized once I got the, I had to get the transmission at an angle, pull this in. Once this popped in, the transmission to the front seated quite well. Um, I thought what I had to do was get the front in first and then readjust this into this. Um, from it, bushing, weight, I, I don't know, uh, connection for this output shaft for the uh, transmission to the drive shaft. So these are 19s, three of these hold it on to the drive shaft, three hold it on to the transmission, 19 in the bolt through here, 19 in the back. You cannot get to these until you take this piece down. 
this from side to side here underneath the car is the transmission uh, mount. This is actually like a bracket and this is the actual mount that's inside. So if you see from the side here, you see the poly inside here? Or well, it's not really poly, it's just black rubber. If you had a poly one, it, it would be poly instead of rubber. Uh, this is actually gives a little bit of sway. So the, uh, the transmission doesn't break if it's locked in. The car has to move, sway a little bit. Uh, this is a ground that goes to the transmission mount. So there's no electricity shorting out your um, uh, transmission. These are electric overdrive transmissions with um, Steptronic, Tiptronic. They have, they have all these different ways that you can shift. And this bolts right into the car here. Um, I think these were 16s and they're about this big. So once you unbolt these two, this piece will unlock from the back of the transmission. And these three on each side are also 16. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this whole unit will come down. The transmission will not fall on you, but it will come down towards you a little bit because it, it'll be locked in from the front of the motor and held in by this. You might want to put transmission jack under here. Um, uh, we had one under here to use. Uh, so uh, after you pull this piece down, then you can get up underneath here. So you can't really, can't really get underneath here. You know, it'll put the, the wrench to get the ratchet on the back to get these bolts off. So take this piece off, take the disconnect this, um, when you disconnect it, you disconnect the ground here. That's great. I'm going to show you the rest of the mounting procedure here. As I spin around, hand, handy little creeper. Okay. So here is some kind of bushing. Uh, this is a um, rubber piece sandwiched into pieces of metal. These are 13s, and they'll go straight up into the bottom of the transmission. Um, what this bushing does on this side is it follows along here and it holds up this piece of the exhaust. So the exhaust is not holding up the transmission. This huge piece is holding up the transmission and then the exhaust is getting like a ride on this. So this has a piece of rubber on it as well underneath. If you see the rubber here, check the rubber when you take this off. It kind of folds over two pieces. If something's wrong with the rubber, just replace it. You're gonna get weird noises or clunking. You're never gonna find it. It's gonna be terrible. You're gonna think, oh, I put all these pieces back together. You know, I, put, I did all this work. I put all these pieces back together. Where's the clunking from? So just do it right the first time. Um, another piece here is this is called the 11 point um, connector. This is does all your electronics. This goes to your wiring harness. It eventually goes to a uh, transmission control unit or TCM, kind of like a uh, ECU, um, engine control unit. So where this goes is, so look, look if, if we're under the car and this is the transmission and the, the bell housing and you're looking up and there goes the motor, like you're looking upside down almost. So you're gonna go on the passenger side here and you're gonna look up. And you see this little hole right here? I didn't install it yet because I wanted you to be able to see where it's at. So this has a little like a, a plastic piece on it. This plastic piece turns. You see me turn it? You see me turn it? Right there. Okay, so you see the grooves in this one? In the top? So you just kind of push this in place here. Find out where it goes. And uh, turn it. Oh, sorry. It's, it's, it's hard to video and, and do everything at once. So I just have to figure it out. I can't do it with one hand right now. I'm sorry. So, um, but this is where you put it in. Uh, there is a shield on this as well. So I really want you to pay attention to the shield. So this is the shield. It's like a little heat shield, but this actually is a protector shield. So um, this shield would, would clip under and bolt onto this one little piece this little uh, allen head here and go in and what that does is that protects any rocks or anything from hitting this and it protects from the heat 
from this header coming down, this gets very, very, very hot. You don't want to melt this. If you melt this, you're done. You got to rip all this wiring out. Plus, these tend to leak, I heard, on these transmissions. This is my second transmission. Uh, Mercedes with a 722.6 automatic Steptronic. I've never had this part leak, but it might. So, um, and this little bit of this around here, this isn't leak. You know, I'm putting this transmission in. I had this pan off, and I didn't clean everything up correctly. Uh, so, um, I'm going to get to that in a little bit. Um, this also here, so right behind your oxygen sensor here, you're going to see this tube that comes up. I think this is a 16 as well, and this is called a banjo bolt. When I get out, I'm going to show you what a banjo bolt looks like. So this is where the fluid goes um, in or out under pressure and follows through and it goes up into your, your radiator up here into the motor. So. What you gotta watch on the banjo bolt is the crush washers. So you see the two pieces of metal right here. You see these these two pieces, this little silver piece between the black and this little so it goes like black, silver, and then a rusty bolt. Those are called crush washers. You're only supposed to use those once. I've used them more than once, but I'm not telling you to to be on the safe side. What that does is that allows you to torque this down just a little bit by hand and push and then that washer will crush a little bit without crushing the tube. The tube is hollow and the bolt is actually hollow. It has holes through the bolt so that the fluid can come up up this way and go right into the right into the bolt here. So then these are the main mounting bolts. These are 14s. There's one here, here here on the bottom uh, there's two way on the top the ones I was showing uh, that um, Javi got so here's some more there's another one way up there and then there's two on the top and that's about it on this side so let's, let's scroll on the other side to make sure that we have the transmission in properly I'm gonna do a little turn and if I had a lift if anybody wants to donate me a lift that'd be cool you know so on the other side, I, I don't know if this is the return or the pump out, but here's another banjo bolt. So you have to have one in, one out. See how that one works? It's got the little, so this is the bolt, the little washer. The black is the, the, uh, um, the tube. And then there's another washer on the other side. It's hard to see and focus at the same time. So once that goes in, uh, you're pretty good with your tubes. You can fill this. Uh, you got to get these 14s on the side over here, uh, all the way up. Now here's one the where it gets a little difficult on this side. So right here, there's a 14. You see the cutout? And right here above, there's another cutout right there. That's 14. And there's this plate right here. So this piece is not connected to this pipe. Even though it looks like it is, it's not. Not going to... Well, actually, this... This piece is connected to this pipe, my bad. Uh, this piece back here is not connected to the pipe. That this piece actually bolts onto this bracket. And you see the, the bolt under there, the sneaky one? The sneaky bolt, that's a 14. And on this side, you see the little slide it goes in? That's a uh, 14E, E14. Remember, they're the um, reverse of Torx, so they stick outwards. These two are 10s. See how they make the star pattern? And this is actually how you get your starter in and out. So you take these two tens off, you move this out of the way, you take the bolt out of the, the steering stem here, move that out of the way, and this is your starter right here. Starter right here. So remember that the starter has to connect in to the um, transmission because it has to grab the flywheel to turn everything over. When you ignite the ignition, the battery sends um, power to this and tells this, okay, stick your little gear out into the transmission right here because you're connected and spin. So that's in uh, and you should be good to go. That's how you also t change your starter. 
So now that everything else is connected underneath, you see the, these were the, this is an E set. So you see the difference, the E's. See how they have like a star bit head? But that's an E set. I can't remember where I got this one at, but I, I got a Craftsman one as well. I think it's a gear wrench, but it doesn't matter. And then just these few basic tools is everything you need to change a Mercedes um, transmission. Uh, you can do it on your own. I've seen people put weird jacks and wood under here, but I wouldn't do that. I'd use a transmission jack because um, even though it's a little bit expensive, it'll save you in the long run. So I'm going to climb out right now and I'm going to show you how to get the two top bolts out without having to come all the way in the back and uh, trying to install this with like 20,000 extensions. They want you to come all the way in the back back here and six extensions all the way up here. Tear all this down in the back so you can get to these two top bolts. And yeah, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. So uh, back here is where those bolts are. If you can, if you can see back here. So back here is where the, the where the transmission is. You see the transmission? And uh, I can't even zoom in. Man, he can get his hand down in there somehow. And he, he got those two transmission bolts on the top, which is fantastic. Uh, last thing. All right, we're back to on the transmission, the 722.6 for the Mercedes-Benz. Comes into um, 230. I have this one in a compressor 1.8. So they said you have to put a thousand extensions together to get to these top two bolts of the transmission. And as you can clearly see, my partner just put a um, quarter inch ratchet with a uh, step up so that we could put a larger um, uh, E socket on it. What does it have? A E14? E14? Was it? E14 on the top two. E14 on the top two. So you can clearly see that um, is, uh, there's a pipe right here. Let me zoom in on it. Uh, zoom in on it. Uh, right here. Right. Oh, here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So you see this pipe bolts in and, and is snapped off. This is actually what happened. I think I lost fluid, overheated, and then my radiator popped. So this is the old one just to keep the fluid in the car. I have a new one that we're going to install after I take this one out. Uh, it's one bolt. I'm going to show you. This is the new one. So this goes down into the transmission. And I do believe that this is a 10 or 12. Uh, once you take this out, it is very hard to get this out. You have to wiggle, 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 and keep trying to pry it out. These, just this little O-ring is holding it in. Uh, but it's been in there for so many years, didn't want to come out. And then remember where I saw you saw the eye? I said it bolts in right here. This piece was chopped off. So it didn't have this top whole portion or the cap. So I think I was just spitting fluid out the top of this. So I have to install this last piece is the motor so maybe i can uh, show you a little bit on this where the transmission is this is the exact same motor actually that's in there right now but this is my old one i only have a hundred on it and uh the the car is no more so i bought the same car now i have 230 on that one and it's about to go so now i got this extra motor I painted it all up myself and everything so this is the flywheel on the back we went over this remember when i was saying the starter sits in the side so this is where the starter actually sits in the side right here. So um, when the starter goes in and then the steering stem, the steering stem will come down right there. The starter will go in right here and there's a little gear and it'll pop. So when you turn the key on, the gear will pop. That gear will catch this gear and it'll start spinning this whole thing, which turns the motor over and the torque converter is connected to this. You're basically in park or uh, park is neutral. But, the, but it's locked and neutral is neutral, but you can coast, you know? So um, when the, this piece comes on in the back, that's the bracket where the bracket goes. Remember I said the starter had a bracket. And then on the other side is the little window, but um, I showed you on another class how to get the uh, torque converter off. 
So last thing I need to do really is to get into the window right here before I forget to explain it to you. So I need to get into the window down here. See the, there's an open window. I'm gonna show, get it in there. You see that? You see the open window? See the hole? The open window. Right? See it? Yeah, is it? So in here is 13s. There's two, two, and two. So you stick the wrench right here. This is the window, but I wanted you to see it. And then I tighten up the torque converter. Right? And I can't spin the torque converter, so I take my 101 sixteenths and I put it down here. On the crank, on the crank pulley. See the crank pulley? I put it down here on the crank pulley. And then I get a breaker bar. Can you see it? Yeah. So on the on the crank pulley, I get a breaker bar and I'll have someone spin it. I mean I can spin it myself, but are you gonna spin this, go feel it, spin this, go feel it? No. I'm gonna take all day. So I have someone spin this clockwise. And um, when I get the first hole, I just tell them easy, easy. I put the first one bolt in of the torque converter and then I let them like bump it up and I'll put the second one in. And then we spin to the next one and then the next one. So like I said, three bolts and you're done. These are actually the torque converter bolts right here. Pretty small. Um, they look pretty new. But I advise to put some Loctite on this. I am going to put Loctite on this. This is under a lot of torque. And I mean, wow, so it's kind of received symbol right on it. It's a little bolt. Never noticed that. And once they're all in, I'm going to take this nice door right here. Dust cover door. And pop that right in so no rocks or anything can get in there. The old one. I showed you guys this one before. You see where it exploded? That little tube, that tube was on this side. See the tube goes right here and it bolts right here. I'll show you. This is what happened to mine. So the tube goes right here, right? And my tube came up to this and then this whole piece was off and it just exploded. Transmission oil all over. And I was on the highway, transmission overheated. I don't want to take a chance of it. So I already had one, so I got rid of it. This was the back piece we were talking about where the drive shaft goes in the 19s. This grommet or bushing or um, connection tailplate uh, for the output shaft, the drive shaft. I, I don't know the proper terminology for this one, uh, but this is where you were at when I said you had to take the bottom panel off, the mount, Remember there was three sixteens, three sixteens, and then that like knuckle and it fell. Well, this is how you put the knuckle in right here. This goes through the knuckle and onto here. So the knuckle sits right here in between and let your transmission move a little bit. Then this is bushing and let your um, drive shaft flex a little bit. All these parts are made out of cast aluminum, they'll crack. You don't want it to crack. And make sure you always put, when you put your shifter linkage back in, you put the little thing, make sure you get this clip. You do not want to be driving down the street, down to something, and this clip come out, and now you can't put your car in um, park, or you can't reverse, you don't have a jack with you, you're an hour away, oh my god, it's, it's just, it's terrible. You know, you don't want to have to deal with it. And on this side, last but not least, is the little door with the little plug. Remember the little plug? And this is what the door looks like when it's connected still. And here's the banjo bolt. Remember the bolt goes in here. And one more banjo bolt. Uh, on the other side, way down here. That's the other banjo bolt. Remember the bolt with the hole in it? So. Typical transmission mount bolt. Uh, a transmission bolt for this. See how long they are? I, they have some blue on them. 
Always make sure to put Loctite on this stuff. You don't have to put Loctite on everything, but put Loctite on the stuff that you really want locked tight. Can you see the head? This is an E head. It's not a Torx. It looks like a Torx, but a Torx would have a hole here. 